Did you know that real estate can serve as a great inflation hedge? Apart from gold, real estate prices have been the best investment in the last high inflation environment in the 70s and 80s. In the last 30 years, they were the second best performing asset class, 0.6% behind stocks. And real estate is on the rise. Just a few months ago, the median house price in the US hit $400,000 for the first time ever. And even better, Goldman Sachs predicts that real estate could go up another 16% this year. That's why we will take a look at the four most interesting real estate ETF options out there that can give you easy access to real estate. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education. And on this channel, I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So first of all, what's the difference between a REIT and a real estate ETF? A REIT is short for Real Estate Investment Trust. That's a trust company that owns and operates properties like houses, apartments, warehouses, malls, and hotels. Investors can then buy a share in a REIT, just like a stock or ETF, and by doing that, ultimately own the underlying assets of the REIT, so the properties it manages. A real estate ETF, on the other side, invests in companies that have an exposure to the real estate industry. So it could be the case that a real estate ETF only holds REITs. Real estate ETFs are a great way to get diversified exposure into the real estate sector if you a don't own a property yet b if you aren't a REIT expert or you don't want to do the research to find the best REITs or c if you simply want to increase your exposure in real estate because you think that it could generate a higher return than the market but please note that an S&P 500 ETF for example already has an exposure to the real estate sector with 2.6 percent just very briefly before we dive into a real estate ETF number one there are some conditions that need to be met it has to be a real estate ETF obviously it has to have an expense ratio of below 0.6% which are the annual fees that you pay with an ETF anything above 0.6% is not competitive enough in my opinion the ETF also has to have a fund size of at least 100 million dollars to make sure that it's liquid enough and lastly it has to be at least five years old to make sure that it has a proven track record all of these points are important to make sure that you are buying an ETF that has less of a risk of being shut down which could have some really negative side effects for investors right let's get started with real estate ETF number one the spider Dow Jones read ETF ticker symbol RWR. It's one of the oldest, cheapest, and simplest real estate ETFs out there. This ETF tracks the Dow Jones US Select REIT Index, which invests in US REITs and US stocks with exposure to the real estate sector. The RWR has an expense ratio of 0.25%, not bad. Its performance in the last five years was good, with an annual return rate of 8.6%, 7% less per year than the S&P 500 though. This ETF has a fund size of $2 billion, which is large enough. This ETF ETF invests in 116 companies from the real estate industry, so quite diversified, which is nice. The top 10 holdings make up 43% of the fund, which is very high. And that's because this ETF, like most ETFs, is a market cap weighted index. It means that companies with a higher value also make up a higher share of the ETF. If we have a look at the sector breakdown, you will see that it mainly invests in industrial and office properties with 31%, followed by residential and retail properties. Dividends are paid out quarterly with a dividend yield of 2.63%. This ETF is an easy choice to get a broad and diversified exposure to US real estate. It invests in over 100 real estate companies that hold thousands of properties themselves across the US from residential properties to industrial and office spaces. Let's move on to real estate ETF number two, the iShares Cohen and Steers REIT ETF, ticker symbol ICF. And this one is also one of the oldest real estate ETFs with a track record of over 20 years. This ETF tracks the Cohen and Steers Realty Majors Index, which only invests in the largest and most liquid US REITs. It also looks at other factors like the management team of a REIT, their portfolio quality, and the capital structure. The ICF has an expense ratio of 0.33%, which is okay considering how niche it is.
years, its performance in the last five years was strong with an annual return rate of 10%, only 5% shy of the S&P 500. But this ETF has a fund size of almost $3 billion because of how niche it is. The ICF only invests in 30 companies, so it filters out almost 200 REITs that are currently registered in the US. So if you go for this ETF, then please only use it as a satellite ETF in your core satellite portfolio. If you want to know what the core satellite portfolio is and how it can elevate your investment strategy, then check out the video in the link. So the top 10 holdings make up 60% of the fund, which is incredibly high. If we have a look at the sector breakdown, you will see that the ICF mainly invests in specialized REITs with 42%. These are REITs that don't fit in any of the other REIT sectors. Examples are movie theaters, casinos, farmland, and so on. The next largest sectors are residential, industrial, and retail REITs. Dividends are paid out quarterly with a dividend yield of 2.1%. This ETF can give you a good edge over the market because of how niche it is. It only invests in the biggest REIT players. Its performance in the last five years was good. It's actually the best performing real estate ETF of this video, but for me, it's a bit too niche. The first two ETFs invested in the US only and investing in one country only is risky because you lack diversification. Another thing, local real estate crash can happen anywhere at any time. The best way to protect your investments is to simply invest in all of the countries so that local real estate crash can be absorbed by your portfolio. That's why it makes sense to invest globally. And that brings us to real estate ETF number three, the Vanguard Global XUS real estate ETF, ticker symbol VNQI. It's one of the cheapest and one of the biggest global real estate ETFs out there. This ETF tracks the S&P Global XUS property index, which invests in stocks with real estate exposure in both developed and emerging markets, excluding the US. This index includes companies that own, develop, and manage real estate. It excludes companies that mainly just get a fee or interest earnings from real estate services or financing. So the focus here is the actual owner and development of properties. The VNQI has an expense ratio of 0.12%, the lowest one of this video, which is surprising considering how many countries the VNQI invests in. Its performance in the last five years was okay with an annual return rate of 4.2%, 11% lower than the S&P 500 per year. So not the strongest performer recently. This ETF has a fund size of over $5 billion, the largest one of this video. It invests in 699 companies from the real estate sector, so many mega diversified. The top 10 holdings make up only 18% of the fund, the most balanced of this video. The VNQI invests in 38 countries, but over 30% of the funds are invested in Japan and Australia, so quite top heavy here. If we have a look at the sector breakdown, you will see that the VNQI mainly invests in real estate development and operating companies with 36%, but also in retail and industrial REITs. Dividends are paid out once a year with a dividend yield of 5.6%. This ETF is an ex-US fund that specifically excludes US companies, so it's a good way to get international exposure with very little overlap to US investments. It's cheap, balanced, and large enough with a high dividend yield, but the performance in the last five years wasn't too great, similar to ex-US equity ETFs. And that brings us to real estate ETF number four, and this one is a special one, the Global X Super Dividend Read ETF, ticker symbol SRET. It tracks the sole active global super dividend read index which targets 30 global reads with the highest dividend yield so this etf is not just a real estate play but could also boost the dividend yield of your portfolio the sret has an expense ratio of 0.58 percent by far the highest one of this video its performance in the last five years was hands down terrible with an annual loss of 1.8 percent in a time where the s p 500 returned 15 percent per year and that has to do with a massive 60 percent crash when the pandemic started the s S&P 500 in red could fully recover in 104 days, whilst the SRET is still down over 30%. And that's the risk with such niche ETFs. The broad market can absorb crashes more easily, whilst niche ETFs can be down for years or even decades. This ETF has a fund size of only $380 million, which is already quite close to the $100 million limit that I talked about in the beginning of the video. It only invests in 30 companies, which isn't that much. The top 10 holdings make up 35% of the fund. This ETF invests in four countries, the US, Singapore, Canada, and Australia, but 59% of the fund is invested in the US. If we have a look at the sector breakdown, you will see that the SRET mainly invests in mortgage REITs, 39%, followed by retail and diversified REITs. Dividends are paid out monthly, which is nice for investors that want to 
live off dividends with a phenomenal dividend yield of 6.88%. As interesting as this ETF might sound, be careful with this one, it's super hot and greasy. There you have it, four of the most interesting real estate ETF options. Be aware that an S&P 500 ETF, for example, already has an exposure to the real estate sector. So investing your money in an additional real estate ETF will increase your exposure, which doesn't necessarily lead to a higher performance. But hey, what do you actually think? Are you invested in real estate ETFs or do you prefer physical real estate? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you if you like what you saw and you want to support this channel. And please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.